Let's go. All right. So this is the Spokane Park Board meeting of Thursday, September 8th, 2022. I'm calling the meeting to order. It's good to see all of you up on the screen. I do miss having you in person down here. Uh, so we have Barb Ritchie and I believe Christina Verhuel are absent excused today, traveling, and I'm not sure if Hannah will join us, but if not, she's working absent excused then for her. So any additions or deletions to the agenda? No. Hearing none. We'll move on. Is there any public comment? Hearing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Park board members, you see nine items in front of you on the consent agenda. Is there any park board member who wishes to have one removed for discussion? Hearing nothing, I will move that the consent agenda be passed as submitted. Do I have a second? I'll second, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the consent agenda as presented, signified by saying aye and wave. Aye. 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 And opposed? All right, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, folks. Special guests, I don't believe we have any. So we're moving right along. And Mark Buning, financial report and budget update, please. Well, good afternoon. Boy, we are quick clicking uh. right along here today. So let me share my screen. Here we will present the financial report for August of 2022. Um, we had uh, some such a tight turnaround this year or this month with the end of the month and the um, the holiday. We had to issue a preliminary report first, but we did get some final numbers out by finance committee. So that's what we will be presenting today. And thanks to the Parks Accounting staff for. Um, you know, trying to pull all these things together in a very short period of time. So anyway, um, actually nothing, uh, we're, being, we're seeing the same patterns uh, we've seen so far this year. Um, as I've mentioned in several of our past meetings, these current financials are being compared, of course, to a budget based on a two-year average. And we know, of course, that the last two years have been anything but typical. And we'll see here in the park fund, uh, our actual expenditure, expenditures and revenues in 2022 will both be higher than the project or than the presented budget average. Um, and again, this reflects a much more typical year as parks activities resume our more typical normal levels. And I also want to mention again that rapid inflation we've been experiencing has had a noticeable impact on our overall level of expenditures particularly in fuel, fertilizers, building materials, and also uh, particularly in temp seasonal labor. So keep that in mind as we go through here and I'll move through pretty quickly. And if there's any questions or uh, comments, please just interrupt and let me know. So here in this first slide, we see a comparison of actual 2022 expenditures through August with, the, with our historical two-year average. Uh, we see that June expenditures, are, or I'm sorry, we see that our August expenditures or through August are significantly more than the budget average. Um, but I also wanna point out that this includes the earlier $1.3 million that was transferred to fund 1950 for our capital repair and replacement and our capital parks capital program. And if we, Factor that $1.3 million out, 2022 expenditures are above the budget average by about 25% or about $2.6 million. Again, reflecting that more normal level of program activity compared to past two years and some of those inflationary increases that we've been experiencing. Now, our second slide, we see our year-to-date revenues compared to the, the historical budget average, and our actual revenues exceed the budget average by about $2.2 million, or 17%. 
And compared to last year, our revenues uh, exceed the 2020 revenues by about $1.4 million. Again, reflecting that much greater level of activity than we've had in, in, past, in the past couple of years. Now our third slide here, uh, we see a comparison of our year-to-date revenues with our year-to-date expenditures. And we see that our total revenues exceed total expenditures by about $483,000. Now if that, if we again factor out that $1.3 million capital transfer, the year-to-date re net revenues are approximately $444,000 less than, two, than in last year, 2021. Their net revenues being the level of revenues over expenditures. Any questions about the park fund before we move to the golf fund? All right, hearing none. Now here in this slide, we see that our year-to-date expenditures are above the historical average about about 11%. Actual operating expenditures are up about $143,000 over last year. You know, again, reflecting those inflationary increases in labor and fuel and fertilizers. And also there's um, uh, been an, if we compare year to year, there's been an increase in some of our capital investment. And furthermore, the year-to-date debt service payments on the SIP loan, which was used to upgrade the irrigation systems, increased about $200,000 this year over last year, reflecting the full amount of the loan. And then last year, we were capitalizing on some of the refinancing of the, of the existing debt at that time. So here in our second graph, we see our total revenues, including, and this, keep in mind, this does include the facility improvement fee, are above the historical average by about $105,000. And total revenues have caught up last year and now exceed 2021 by approximately $100,000. So we got off to a slow start with the cool spring, but we've caught up and then a little bit more. And our last slide here, we see a comparison of total revenues to actual expenditures. And we see revenues exceed expenditures by approximately $1.7 million. And note this does include the facility improvement fee. And then overall, the total year-to-date year net revenues, including the facility improvement fee is about $267,000 less than the same time last year. And then that's due primarily to those increased debt service payments. So we've had a really good August. Hopefully we have a nice fall and can move into the slow time of year with a good healthy fund balance. So any questions about the golf fund? All right, that concludes the financial report. And Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. All right, any discussion or questions from park board members? If not, then we will move on. All right, we don't have any special discussion items today, I don't believe, so let's move on to our committee reports. I know that the urban forestry meeting was canceled, but Kevin, do you want to say anything for the good of the order? Just that the next meeting is scheduled for October 4th at 4.15. All right, thank you. And Golf Committee, Jerry. Yes, good afternoon, Jennifer. We met uh, on Tuesday at 8 a.m. Uh, what I'm going to do is just a synopsis of uh, what we've already heard as far as our action item, which was presented on the consent agenda. We are finally getting ready to uh, complete the Downriver Golf Course roof uh, for the clubhouse, and that's going to include the HVAC system needs, and this is under change order number one. Uh, discussion items included our 2023 budget, which will be ready for the October financials. Uh, 2023 numbers also include rates, passes, and a proposed fee increase. Golf started out this year rather slow. As you all know, we had a pretty wet spring. 
So we are really ready uh, and hoping that we go away into uh, the fall, October month, uh, making up for the loss of rounds. Um, but we are currently gaining on that recovery number. So we're hoping to just have our fingers crossed for October. Uh, the Spokane City Championship was a huge success with 152 players. This event is set up to accommodate all ages, skill levels from beginner to pro. It was a great way to showcase Esmeralda and Indian Canyon with their new irrigation. Uh, Qualchin then hosted the banquet this year, which was well attended. Remember, we had uh, two years with nothing going on. So a band was added to the venue this year and uh, invited dancing out on the outdoor deck and the weather was fantastic. Uh, marketing, Fiona, uh, Fiona Dixon uh, shared the variety of ways we present golf ads, reminders, web access to the public, and the social media shows that we have 32,000 followers. Currently, she and Mark Poyer are planning the new commercial spots that are shown during the regular PGA, LPGA televised presentations, as well as timed. Uh, the courses are in excellent condition, and Down River will be hosting a few tournaments in September, and the Halloween Open will take place the 1st of October. With that, next golf meeting will be October 11th, Tuesday at 8 a.m. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Jerry. All right, Greta, you actually have an action item. Yes, I do. I have an action item, and I believe that Nick is going to present on the Spokane County United Way Foreign Learning Trail Memorandum of Agreement. That's that right. right? That is correct. Um, and actually, I have with me here today uh, John Dixon and a number of other staff from the United Way, which have been a true pleasure to work with on, on this project. You should be seeing the Born Learning Trails presentation. Is that popping up on your screen in Chambers? Yes, it's indeed. online. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, well, John, if you don't mind, maybe I would defer to John to tell us a little bit about what a Born Learning Trail actually is. Well, thank you all so much. And really quick, I'd just like to have my team introduce themselves. So I'm John Dixon. I am the Chief Executive Officer of Your United Way. Josh Henrian. Dakota Hanna. Andy. Andy Backen. So United Way for quite a few years now have sponsored what called the Born Learning Trails. It's a series of 10 signs that are located in uh, parks and and it really is focused on enabling parents and their children in parks to have a learning experience together. Um, what we do have is, uh, for our signs, we have two types of signs. One that is in English, and one is in Spanish. And here's an example of one of the signs. And it's really kind of nice about it. Uh, this happens to be one that is going to be showing up in Audubon Park if everything is approved. Um, you'll see on the bottom we do have sponsorship logos uh, with the uh, City of Spokane Parks and United Way. In this case, Primera is sponsoring uh, that park with these 10 interactive signs. Um, like I said, there's over 750 of these installed across uh, the U.S. and nothing in eastern Washington. So uh, uh, with approval here, uh, the very first born learning trail signs in Spokane County will be through the City of Spokane Park System. Next. As we reached out, and this was only about two months ago that we started this, so uh, I cannot thank uh, the City Parks team enough, uh, uh, Garrett and, and Nick and Al, for the, the speed with which, and with our Lands Commission and our Parks Board for uh, uh, the enthusiastic partnership we've had so far. In fact, this morning, Nick, thank you for walking each of the five parks with our team uh, to locate some ideal locations uh, for these signs. The last thing we want to do is rupture any, any uh, water lines or electrical cables when we put these posts in. Um, but when we saw this quote on your website, it said, you know, I can see that 
both of us, our missions are, are aligned very tightly. Uh, we believe in the same things that we're trying to do. And we really appreciate working with the Lands Commission and the city. We're really focusing those under-resourced neighborhoods. Uh, these zones have been very, very important for us. Uh, we want to make sure that that's what we're focused on, is equitable access and wellness and enrichment programs across all. And um, it's just so great uh, having our organizations and Mopathy working together. Uh, we're both passionate in the same fields, you know, your, your parks are amazing. I mean, my team just walked into five parks this morning uh, came back. <laughs> Thank you for the amazing quality of parks that uh, you continue to run, and we're just very honored uh, with acceptance that uh, this, we can add to our park systems uh, for our staff. Next, please, and especially our citizens. So uh, we have, as we've worked with the, the, the parks team, the Lands Commission, we have found our, our five parks. Uh, uh, we have Mission Park, and if all goes to plan on the 13th, which is next uh, Tuesday, uh, that's going to be our first test on putting in and installing these signs. Avista is the corporate sponsor of Mission Park. Uh, in addition to the signs, you'll also see that there are some uh, um, Things hopscotch on the ground that that are meant to uh, be part of these signs. Uh, like for example, this sign that I've got right here. It says, "I'll just read, like start your child on the road to reading." And this sign says, "Hey, try this. Um, point to the letters painted on the ground. Say the sound each letter makes. All right. Think of words or names that start with A, B, or C. This is a parent and children working together." Point and say, I see a tree. What rhymes with tree? Take turns. The bottom line is that turtle tips, playing with letters and sounds, helps children get ready to read. So this is just one of the, uh, the 10 signs that we will have um, both in English and Spanish at each of our five parks. We've also got Grant Park, Portland Park, Franklin Park, and Audubon Park, uh, in addition uh, to Mission Park. We, uh, United Way, our responsibility as part of the MOA is to provide and install all the components, no cost to the parks at all. We've already purchased uh, all the, the signposts to your specifications. We got them. They're ready to go now. Uh, and per our MOA, right now it's up to uh, six years, our responsibility, working with you and your team, uh, that we keep them looking very nice, very professional. It's very important to us. I know it's very important you also. And at the end, we'll see where we're at. If we want to continue this partnership, uh, our goal at United Way is to continue to partner with not only uh, the City of Spokane Parks in the future, uh, but other park systems, library districts, uh, etc. Because we'd like to see these signs uh, um, in even more parks uh, in green spaces around our region. Next. And with the parks, uh, Nick, I don't know if you want to take this. Oh, sure. Uh, you were doing a pretty good job there, John, so <laughs> I don't want to disrupt anything here, but I would say um, as Parks Department, you know, our roles and responsibilities will largely remain the same within our parks as they are today. Um, you know, our job really was to help evaluate which parks are suitable for this sort of installation, and we've been doing that over, over time uh, the last few weeks. I've got a map that we'll show you next that shows you where those uh, sign locations are proposed. Um, and we did walk the sites today um, with United Way staff to come up with some proposed sign location and our irrigation technicians will then go through over the next day or two and take a look and verify that we're not in, uh, proposing anything that would damage anything within the park. We also heard we didn't want to clutter the parks up and so we really took great uh, care to make sure we didn't uh, space signs or propose signs and locations that would lead to clutter within our park spaces so uh, and then as far as maintenance is concerned really our maintenance will remain the same i mean the sidewalks are maintained by us and they will be in the future the lawn is mowed by the park staff and the leaves are picked up by the park staff and the irrigation is maintained by us and that will all remain the same uh, so united ways uh, roles and responsibilities for maintenance will really apply to the signs and the paint markings on the ground as, as they're installed by their uh, donors. This is a map um, from our master plan which shows the park social and environmental equity zones. 
the darker purple zones being those highest equity areas within our city. Um, and you can see there are five parks proposed, Franklin, Audubon, Portland, Mission, and Grant, all of which are within medium or high equity zones within the city, all of which are uh, sites which have long pathways, which are available for hosting a born learning trail without the installation of new pathways, and all of which are very near or adjacent to schools. And that's a really key piece too, is we can catch those kids on a walk to school or on a walk home, or even give the teachers an opportunity to take them outside and do this activity. And we want to really be close to playgrounds as well. So that's, that was the target there. Um, what you see here is a couple of pictures from today, walking around the picture on the right, you see in Mission Park, where we've sort of dummied in, for lack of a better word, some proposed locations for permanent signs. And you kind of get a sense of the spacing, uh, maybe 30, 40, 50 feet between signs um, in a way that's not cluttering too much. Uh, and then you see on the left here a new pathway that was installed a year or so ago in Franklin Park, which leads to Madison Elementary. So this would be a, this is a safe route to school installed by the city, so we have a lot of kids walking on it. Um, and I think it will be a great opportunity to kind of extend their learning experience to within the park at no cost to the parks department. John, I think I'll turn it back over to you for a, a thank you, and then we'll open it up to the park board. You bet. Thank you so much. Uh, it's just been an honor working with, with all of you. Andy, did you have something you'd like to add? Yes, thank you. I wanted to thank Nick and the park team especially for helping us identify these parks that are in the priority equity zone. One thing I wanted to share that came out of this partnership in working together and identifying uh, these particular parks, I thought it was really interesting. Um, I did some quick research on several of the schools that are adjacent to these parks just on their kindergarten readiness scores. And we already know that many of the city schools in Spokane, when kids start kindergarten, they take the Washington Kids Assessment and across the city, the scores are already well below the state average. Mm. But I thought it was interesting, Grant Elementary, right by Grant Park, only 9% of kindergartners are kindergarten ready based on the Washington Kids Assessment scores. Um, Audubon Elementary, 15% of the kids are ready. And then Franklin and Holmes Elementary, about 19%. So these parks are going to be tremendously valuable to families in the neighborhood for their little ones. Um, as their kids get ready to go to school, as the, you know, they take their littlest learners through the parks. So we really appreciate the opportunity, and um, it fits really, really neatly into our desire to really help bring early learning supports to underserved or marginalized communities. So thank you. Thank you. So thank you all. Back to you, Nick, and the Parks Board. All right. Well, it's so nice to have such a feel-good uh, action item. So back to you, Greta, and any other questions? Yeah, well, well thanks a lot, uh, John and Josh and Dakota and Andy. Very interesting. You guys picked a pretty nice day to go out and walk through the park. This is life. And I'm glad you were able to do the locations, and I hope those irrigation people don't um, mess it up pretty too much. Um, does, does anybody on the park have any additional uh, questions on this? No, it's a don't great see project. Any hands up. So it looks like we must have covered everything pretty well in the. Um, in the presentation, so thanks again for that. Um, so let's go ahead and make a motion that we um, approve the Spokane County United Way Born Learning Trail uh, Memorandum of Agreement, which is a no cost agreement. I'll second that. Thank you, Sally. Uh, moved and seconded. Is there any more discussion? Uh, was that more discussion? I don't think so. <laughs> I think that was um, I'm going to go ahead and call for the question. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Um, opposed? 
raise your hand and say nay. That motion carries you now, please. Thanks a lot, everybody. We're looking to seeing those out there in our parks and helping our uh, kindergartens get kindergartners get raised. Um, and the committee had a couple other action items with our consent agenda. And in addition to that, we had a great presentation from Barry on the uh, design status for the Liberty Park Playground. So check in if you're interested in learning more about that. And we got an update on the city by dog park selection, mm. design, and operations uh, progress. And as I understand it, there's still an online survey about dog parks. Is that true? Is it still open? It just ended on Labor Day. Ended. Yeah, okay. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Right. Well, there was an online survey. So hopefully, a lot of people got to participate in the survey. And the next land committee meeting, it looks like, is going to be. Um, could it possibly be in October. October fifth. Um, October fifth. And by Webex. 3.30, um, and also in which conference room? It's or listed. Or do we not know yet? First floor of City Hall. It's Sister City Conference First floor room. of City Hall. Great. S Sister City Conference um, Room. Yeah. The Sister City Conference Room. All right. That's my report. Thanks. Thank you, Greta. All right. Well, it's always nice to have the partnership of great organizations like United Way, and what a great project. So good to have that moving forward. Sally, Recreation Committee. Hi, everyone. Recreation had two action items that were on the consent agenda, so thank you for that. Um, I would like to just cover very briefly the end of the summer preliminary recreation report that Jennifer presented to us. and. Again, some great, great things um, coming out of her team. Uh, Aquatics Open Swim had um, an increase of 16,994 um, attendees as compared to 2019 and more than double compared to 2021. And um, although the participant and program numbers were similar to 2021, 2022 showed a significant revenue increase. And uh, the other thing is the number of programs, participants, and revenues in the outdoor and um, Dwight Merkel summer programs was higher than 2021. But Corbin Art Center saw a 30% increase over 2021, and TRS participation nearly doubled from 2021. Great. And then finally, um, in partnership with the Skyhawks and new ESD 101, it was hosted, Shadow Park hosted a, a free full day gang prevention program with 110 at-risk youth participating. Additionally, the 10-week um, free fitness program had 75 participants. So really great things coming out of um, REC. And then if you haven't seen the uh, fall activity guide, it is digital. And I would um, recommend you take a look at it. There's some good things um, also coming up uh, for fall. And the next uh, meeting is scheduled at this time for October 5th at 5.15. Thank you, Sally. And again, a shout out to Jennifer Papich and her team for creating such a great fall activity guide. Um, and thank you, Sally, for your leadership there as well. All right, moving on to Nick Sumner and Riverfront Park Committee. All right, thank you, Jennifer. Um, so I have an action item also that was presented in the consent agenda, but um, I, I think it's- uh, You're muted. You can press star six anytime the to unmute agenda. yourself. Uh, how we can guard against uh, wind-related failures in the light blades at the pavilion. Um, that'll be good for us. Um, we also had a great discussion about the, the current Spokane Parks Foundation campaign and kind of the future of that and what that look like. Um, and so I think there'll be more coming uh, to the board about that. Uh, also got an update on the U.S. Pavilion naming rights uh, by Amy and the August 22 operations report. Um, it was a good meeting, lots of good discussion, and our next meeting will be October 10th at 4 p.m. Thank you, Nick. All right, Mr. Anderson, the Finance Committee. 
Finance Committee met Tuesday, September 6th at 3.18 p.m. via WebEx and at the Pavilion con Conference Room. Finance also had an action item to approve Parks Operation Equipment Financing with Turf Star Equipment. Through You're Hamilton unmuted. Bank, was approved and sent to the board as part of the consent agenda. The 2023 budget and fund balance projections presented by Mark Bunig and Garrett Jones highlighted M&P COLA adjustments of approximately $1.3 million. The 2023 budget due to unresolved process questions regarding risk management assessments has not been approved by finance. Mark presented the August financials, which due to reduced time frame to complete, did not reflect a comprehensive August performance. And the next finance committee meeting scheduled for October 11th at 3 p.m. in hybrid format, and that's also at the Pavilion Conference Room and WebEx. Thank you, Bob. Why don't you move right into DVC, Development and Volunteer Committee. Okay. The DVC met Wednesday, August 17th, in hybrid format, City Hall and WebEx. Garrett Jones and Rick Romero presented Expo Plus 50 updates. They've had meetings with five landscape architects regarding in-kind donations and to share their visions of this celebration. An initial meeting with Avista focused on developing activities to enhance recreational usage in and around the Spokane River. And that blends well with the community input to Parks Master Plan. The committee expressed a need to develop marketing and organizational leadership roles related to event management and information coordination. Garrett mentioned a marketing meeting was scheduled at a later date. Kelly Brown presented a DVCAC update, including the master plan presentation by Garrett and Nick Hammond, a Friends of the Bluff presentation highlighting opportunities for trailhead connections with the bluff, and Fiona Dixon presented an update of the Friends Toolkit and the MOU template. That meeting was adjourned at 3.38 p.m. And the next DVC committee meeting scheduled for September 21st at 3 p.m. in hybrid format at the City Hall via WebEx. Thank you, Bob. Do you want me to do Kelly's? Sure. Why don't you go ahead and present for Kelly Brown, who's not here today? Uh, the DVCAC met August 25th in hybrid format at 4 p.m. At this meeting, Kelly Brown presented a toolkit update with specific emphasis on the MOA t template. And then members shared upcoming events, which is exactly one of the functions we hope this committee would do. Lee Williams, the Friends of Coeur d'Alene Park, she talked about their Thursday night concert series. Trevor Finchamp, Friends of the Bluff, their annual meeting at the Rocket Market. Greg Conley, Friends of Spokane Skate Parks, and they're researching a new wheels park, potential sites near Beacon Hills or Minnehaha. And Kelly Brown, the Friends of Manitou, talked about their biannual plant sale. The meeting was adjourned at 422, and their next meeting will be Wednesday, September 22nd at 4 p.m. Thank you, Bob. So as you can hear, the uh, DVC, the Development and Volunteer Committee, and its uh, sub subsidiary committee, which is the Citizen Advisory Committee that reports to it, is now functioning just as we hoped with the different Friends of groups informing us of what's going on in a really direct way, therefore informing the public, but also sharing information amongst themselves. And for those of you who are thinking of creating a Friends group, this is ex exactly the kind of opening that you might have to um, get your park um, more notoriety in a positive way and uh, share the news. So think about that. All right, so obviously I'm moving into my president's report. Thank you, everyone. I wanted to give a shout out to Bill Burke. Um, 41 years of pig out in the park is pretty astounding. If anybody thinks that an individual can't make a difference in their city just being one person, look at what Bill Burke has accomplished. Think of all of the economic impact of that, the fun, all the different flavors that all of us have enjoyed over the years. And that's exactly the kind of event that we create our parks for. 
Um, so thank you, Bill, for that leadership and for being so faithful and bringing it back to the park 41 times. Um, so let's, we're looking forward to 42. Um, thanks again. And then a shout out to John Moog, Amy Lindsay, and the Riverfront Park staff. Um, that's 125,000 individuals that were tabulated as having uh, been down at Pig Out in the Park this last weekend. That's a quarter million feet uh, tromping down the grass, and it's a lot of cleanup for our park staff, but I know that they're doing a great job and restoring the park to its wonderful green space um, and, and cleaning it up, and it's, it's a big job. So just a shout out to all of those folks for all the hard work in keeping our parks green and lovely. I also wanted to give a shout out to Dave Randolph. He is a volunteer who's been keeping the clock tower at Riverfront Park on time for, I don't know, 25 years? Lots More and lots that. of time. More than that. Well, what is it, 113 steps up there? The guys got to have the best quads in the city. Um, and he's been very gently and very faithfully keeping that clock running and on time, um, which makes, again, all of us on time, but also makes our park relevant and that clock tower um, really a central piece of that park and of, of the identity of Spokane. So Dave, thank you for your faithful service. So I'm gonna then call out Nick Sumner. Anything for our conservation futures? I have nothing at this time. All right, Nick. Barb Ritchie is not here today. Um, I don't think I have a Parks Foundation report except to say that we appreciate our relationship with them and we're looking again at that agreement and, and how we move forward from that. And Jonathan Bingle, I thought I saw his name up on the screen, but I don't see it now. I don't know if there's anything from his office. Doesn't appear so. So Mr. Jones, director's report. All right, thank you. Um, I'm gonna start off with like a, a lot of records. Um, and the, the first being that the city golf championship was sold out in record time. Uh, I think that's just a huge compliment to our conditions and our, our staff leading that and Mark Poyer and the, and the superintendents and the investments that the park board has made in those golf courses and seeing that record attendance and, and being sold out in record time. And, and Sally brought this up too. And, and we also saw what we think in recent history, record attendance at our aquatic center. So, you know, about 143,900 swimmers, um, 300 or 3,600 kids we taught swimming lessons this year, which is a huge compliment. And then another one too that we always forget when we had that lull in 2020, we actually employed 180 employees and citizens during this time as well, which is a huge compliment. And also the Little Spokane River Shuttle and its renter, uh, rentals wrapped up over the Labor Day weekend, but a huge successful season. Um, the popularity was actually over capacity in many cases, um, but a huge success there. And then also too with our Spokane Community Outdoor Recreation Experience, or what we call SCORE, um, we took over 250 plus community center youth on outdoor adventures uh, with that SEEK grant funding that we received. So another huge success there. Um, Park Board President mentioned, again, biggest pig out in history um, and seeing that attendance. And also uh, one of the largest uh, Spokane Symphonies uh, turnouts that I've seen at Comstock Park as well, uh, uh, Labor Day. Weather was beautiful, the park was beautiful, the music was beautiful, and it was great to see that back in Comstock Park. And then also um, from an operational standpoint, that you know the seasons are changing now, we're moving into fall. Um, we have a, a tiered approach in our operations in our restrooms in, in different phases. So we're rolling back on our phase three restrooms that are going to be closed and then back to our phase two operations uh, for the remaining restrooms in our park system. And as to, as I recently shared in a, um, an opinion comment article in the Inlander, uh, momentum, positive momentum is building on our recently adopted master plan. And and really seeing the potential in what could be in that investment and really making our park system the best in the country. And what is so ironic and really great is we have volunteers with expertise wanting and coming to us, wanting to help and volunteer their time to really make that a reality in the future. And so what we see uh, here in the near future is establishing an executive team similar to what we did in Riverfront Park 
really around the next big thing in our park system and having that brainstorming start here in the next month or so of, of bringing board members in, our staff and these volunteers and really strategically starting to think of taking those priorities, goals and objectives, turning that into an implementation plan and how can we look at funding strategies moving forward. So we're, that's really exciting to see that momentum there. And then also too, uh, we just recently advertised for bids for the naming rights of the U.S. Pavilion. Uh, what we found too through the, par uh, the pand pandemic and also that positive momentum, we can't do anything without our partners and being able to leverage our funding with partners funding to give back to the citizens. And so that is now advertised to bid and will be open through October 10th. And then also Shakespeare in the Park will happen here this month at both Riverfront and Manitou. Fall Fest will also be happening uh, the beginning of October, the first through the second at Riverfront Park. And then also lastly, uh, just thanking the board for the patience of uh, the 2023 budget process. Every year is different. This one I have never seen before in, in my time here at Parks and Recreation, but we're moving through it and we appreciate the pra uh, patience of the park board and want to make sure that we have all the best information to give the park board as far as financials and moving forward in a sustainable way in 2023. Thank you, Mr. Jones. All right. Very nice to hear all of those good things. So um, if there is nothing else, anything else from park board members for the good of the order? I think we have a record 45 minute meeting today. Hearing nothing else, I will close the meeting at 4.14. Thank you all. Thank you all.